Welcome to The Power to Create, a web series helping you refine your creative vision by looking at the fusion of technology and inspiration. Have you ever wondered how music videos are created? This week, we go on location with rising country music star, Tyler Tolliver. You'll learn how to use multiple cameras to capture the action. Okay, we're all set up and we're gonna be recording our multi-camera setup here pretty quickly. The artist is ready on stage. We've got all the cameras placed. We've gone with a mixture of cameras for coverage here on the shoot. We actually have some DSLRs. We're mostly shooting Nikon on that front. A couple of GoPros just to get some experimental angles and our primary camera that's capturing the house audio. We are gonna be doing some live audio recording is the AF100 from Panasonic. So we got a lot of flexibility here on coverage of the scene. In the realm of music videos, you need a lot of coverage. You want that flexibility as you cut from angle to angle to be able to tell that story. Chasing Alabama Is the only way she knows To get over sorrows Just let everything else go Chasing Alabama on the house sound front, we're going with a single mic and also a line out of the guitar, and the audio engineer is gonna be recording and sending us a feed from the audio mixing booth back to the cameras. This is gonna be the primary source. The other cameras are just getting reference audio. So we're going with one primary record, and we're gonna take a secondary unit as a backup. In this case, we're gonna use a Zoom H4n and patch that into house sound, because it's always good to have double redundancy. Just like storage on a Drobo, you want to make sure that you can have a failure and not lose data. So we're doing double audio recording here too. So in this shoot, I was serving in the role of director. The producer for the shoot was Rachel Longman, and she did a great job of pulling all the pieces together, working with the crew and the talent, and securing our location. I also had a director of photography, Kevin Bradley, and it was his job to make decisions about the lighting and the camera placement. So let's talk to Kevin for a second and get a DP's insight on the multi-camera process. All right, so today we had a seven camera shoot and uh, when you're doing more than three cameras, you know, there's a, a basic ideology to all of it. My A camera was the AF-101 right here. And uh, as you can see, we've got a big 18 to 85 red zoom lens on it. Zoom lens weighs about 15 pounds, camera weighs about five. Once this is all set up, it's a pretty large and versatile camera package. We wanted some flexibility when shooting. Part of that involved using a zoom lens so we could frame up the shot from different locations. One advantage of zoom lenses is that you can quickly change the composition of the shot without having to physically reset the camera. However, a downside is that they don't have the same shallow depth of field that a prime lens does, and they're not as sensitive to light. So this is my most versatile camera. It allows me to get the most variety of angles um, the fastest. And the basic idea is for the this last shot, we had the Dana Dolly here, slider, five foot slider in the middle of the shot. So he was a, it was a 50-50 shot. So I could get to either side of him very fast. And with the zoom lens, I can get a wide shot. I can get, it's a low angle. So I have a wide low shot. I have a tight shot on his face and I have mediums all across the spectrum. So that was why I picked that to be the A camera. He said I'm leaving this old town. Going to a place far away. So for my B, C, and D cameras, we had three Nikon DSLRs. What's great here about DSLRs is that we could very affordably add another camera angle. Video cameras have traditionally been very cost prohibitive, but with DSLR cameras, they often start in the low thousand dollar range with a lens. You could of course spend more, but what's great is that all of these cameras have a nice filmic look and they make really compelling visuals. So my A camera is at six o'clock, right dead center of the stage. So that means that my B and C cameras are at three o'clock and nine o'clock. The reason for this is because it gets a more dynamic shot and more variety of shots. Because if the cameras are too close together, what ends up happening is that the shots aren't very different. My A camera, this is a rental item. This isn't something you're gonna be using every day. The advantage of this lens is that it's just as sensitive as a prime. But in your kit, if you have primes, you have the advantage of lower light sensitivity so you don't have to run it at such a high ISO and get such a high noise level. One of the nice things about shooting with prime lenses is the great filmic look. You can really get that great shallow depth of field 
Another advantage of shooting with prime lenses is that they're very sensitive to light. This means lower overall noise in the image because you don't have to bump up the camera's ISO. I really like shooting with prime lenses, and in fact, they're often cheaper than their zoom lens counterparts. We'll stop at the same diner to grab a bite and a cup of joe. They glanced at each other. Somehow they both know. He said, You're heading in my direction. She said, Yes, I think I am. I hit the road with one thing on my mind. Chasing Alabama. Okay, so we got one take in the can. We're going to go for a safety. It's always a good idea to get some redundancy. All the cameras fired off correctly. It looked like we got a solid take there. We're going to promote it to a new number for the slate. Now, the good news is that we're going to have those multiple angles of coverage. Some of those angles can be used even between takes. So some of the low angle or the behind the scenes angle that's cutting back, that's going to give us some flexibility. This time through, we're going to try to get some different tight shots. So on some of the cameras, we'll focus on tighter angles of things like the guitar playing, which is going to give us some variety. We had a lot of good coverage of the vocal performance on that last take, and these two takes can be combined. One thing we did to add some depth to the scene is use the fog machine. Now, this was built into the stage, and it's very common in musical venues. The advantage here is that it really put a little bit of texture into that scene, so the shots didn't get too flat. You see some dimensionality, and as the light shines through the fog, you really get a sense of perspective. So it takes the subject from feeling like they're in limbo and instead just adds a little bit of overall depth and perspective to the scene. So for this country music video, we were able to take advantage of the lights in the club, and we had a board operator working with us so we could control the levels and the extremes of all the lights. And we also had fog too, so that added a little bit of diffusion, created a better background for us, and carried that light so you could actually see beams. Chasing Alabama. One of the things I like with the music video is the emotional feeling, and we got that captured here in the musical performance. It took a few takes to get the right options, but that's the great thing about a multi-camera performance, is that you have flexibility, and you could take the different angles and piece them together. We're going to go back and supplement this for the final video by shooting some additional scenes that add on to this to make an overall compelling piece. I'd like to thank you for joining us. My name's Rich Harrington, and you've been watching The Power to Create, brought to you by Drobo, small box, big storage. We're going to head back to the studio, and on a future episode, we'll show you how all these angles get cut together in the video editing process.